welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Ashing Sini Veera Singha. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Sri Lanka tourism represents in WTM London and commences the game of winning back the popularity for the destination. Opposition leader Mahind Rajapaksa finds falls in the manifesto from the opposition camp. News in detail. Sri Lankan tourism was the partner at World Travel Market London 2019 as the Sri Lanka's tourism industry continues its resolute for recovery. Minister of Tourism Development and Wildlife and Christian Religious Affairs John Amarthunga and a delegation of over 150 officials attended WTM London which was held yesterday and today at Excel Docklands. Sri Lanka Tourism earlier announced that they will use the WTM platform mainly to say business is as usual in Sri Lanka after Easter Sunday attacks and to communicate its strong recovery within a very short period. Minister of Tourism Development and Wildlife and Christian Religious Affairs, John Amarthunga, speaking at the event, said that through this premier partnership status, Sri Lanka aims to win back the popularity for the destination and aggressively promote the diverse tourism we offer. Officials from the Tourism Promotion Bureau said the recovery of tourism had already been better than expected since the Easter Sunday terror attacks, with all airlines and cruise lines now returning to the island. Here, Sri Lankan High Commissioner in London, Manisha Gunasekara expressing her views at the event. So we are at the WTM. Uh, this is the first day of the WTM launch and I'm very happy that Sri Lanka is a, a premier partner of uh, the world tourism uh, market this year. The UK market is extremely important for Sri Lanka and uh, following the Easter Sunday incidents, it was very important to reinforce the, the British market, which is highest in terms of revenue. Poland Deputy Foreign Minister Masij Lang emphasizes that the Polish and Sri Lankan business community have massive untapped potential to further fortify bilateral trade and investment ties. Poland Deputy Foreign Minister, who arrived in Colombo on Monday, made these observations yesterday addressing a business forum held with the Poland business delegation hosted by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. Sri Lanka welcomed a top trade delegation from Poland and across the EU as the first ever lot Polish Airlines direct flight from Warsaw to Colombo landed at the Bandaranaik International Airport last Sunday. Meanwhile, a business forum and B2B meeting was held with the Poland business delegation hosted by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board yesterday. The National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka and the Polish Chamber of Commerce also inked a Memorandum of Understanding at the event to explore private sector trade and investment opportunities in both countries. Bilateral trade between Sri Lanka and Poland has grown rapidly from around $19 million in 2015 to $190 million in 2018. Meanwhile, Poland Deputy Foreign Minister Masej Lang emphasized that the Polish and Sri Lankan business community have massive unexploited potential to further strengthen bilateral trade. One of the major objectives of my visit to Sri Lanka is the strengthening of our economic relations, which I hope will gain a new momentum after the Polish flight carrier initiated lot initiated the new regular direct services from Warsaw to Colombo. I'm happy to note that bilateral, political, economic and cultural cooperation between our countries has been going from strength to strength in recent years. I'm pleased to note that the value of bilateral trade between Poland and Sri Lanka has grown rapidly from approximately 19 million US dollars in 2015 to around 190 million US dollars in 2018. However, I'm convinced that there remains vast potential for uh, developing our economic uh, uh, partnership. We have a lot of still untapped potential in our relations. The Government of Republic of Korea will facilitate Sri Lanka to establish National Center of E-Content Development for Computer Assisted Teaching. Finance Minister yesterday entered into an MOU to receive a concessional loan of 5,460 million rupees for the planned National Center of E-Content Development for Computer Assisted Teaching in Sri Lanka.
Finance Ministry says that the proposed project will improve ICT teaching and learning environment for secondary education in the country, enhance teachers' ICT education capacity, and provide equal opportunity for education for every student, including those living in rural areas. In line with the plan, it is proposed to establish fully equipped National Contents Development Centre in Northwestern Province and two provincial ICT education centres in Eastern and Southern Provinces. Two centers will engage in developing e-learning contents and the content will be shared among teachers and students through e taxalava and other training programs currently in operation. The Exim Bank of Korea will provide a loan to establish National Center of e-content development for computer-assisted teaching and the interest rate per annum will be 0.15% with a repayment period of 40 years including a grace period of 10 years. The signing of loan agreement pertaining to the project took place yesterday at the Ministry of Finance. The Board of Investment of Sri Lanka signed an agreement with Lamor Hotel Private Limited to set up, conduct and operate a 176-room, 5-star hotel project in Tangol. The project represents an investment of 35 million US dollars and will employ a staff of 355 members at the property. The agreement was signed by the chairman of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka, Mangaleapa, and chairman of the Amagi Group, S. Ganeshanathan. It was noted at the event that Tangol is being selected for this venture because it is an ideal location which offers a unique old world charm and is far less crowded than other developing tourist areas in the province, such as Gaul. President of Business Development of Atmosphere Hotels and Resorts of the Maldives, Shrikan Dash added that the company's ability to deliver a top-tier product with exemplary service combined with an amazing location in quintessential Sri Lankan surroundings will ensure a resounding commercial success for this project. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Let's look at the latest developments of the looming presidential election now. Opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksa requests the venerable Mahanayaka theorists of the three sects to obtain from the UNP candidate a written pledge to uphold the unitary state, to oppose federalism and to oppose all the proposals contained in the draft constitution tabled in parliament by Prime Minister Ronnie Vikram Singh earlier this year. Opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksa claims that the chapter on constitutional reform in the manifesto of the UNP presidential candidate contains provisions to replace the unitary state with a formulation that describes Sri Lanka as an undivided and indivisible state. Issuing a statement to the media, opposition leader says that this is accompanied by the pledge that governmental powers will be devolved to the provinces to the maximum extent possible. The opposition leader further highlights that the UNP manifesto also contains provisions to expand the powers and functions of the provincial councils to set up a second chamber in parliament. Rajapaksa says that this can be led to curb the powers of the parliament to allow the provincial units to raise funds independently, to place district and divisional secretaries under the provincial councils and to create a constitutional court which will adjudicate in disputes between the centre and the provincial units. He further says that the draft constitution sought to describe Sri Lanka as an Ekiya Rajya in Singhala and as an Orumitanadu in Tamil while carefully refraining from using the English phrase unitary state which has specific constitutional connotations. Thus the label of unitary state would have remained in Singhala while in Tamil and English Sri Lanka would no longer be recognized as a unitary state. Rajapaksa also claims that though great care has been taken to avoid using phrases like Ekiya Rajya or Unitary State, it has a reference in Singhala to Maubime Ekiyatwe, which translates into English as the unity of the motherland. The former president stresses that the phrase Maubime Ekiyatwe has no constitutional value, but it can be used to misleadingly suggest to Singhala readers that the manifesto seeks to uphold the unitary state. 
Minister of Megapolis and Western Development partly Trumpika Ranavaka states that new Democratic Front presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa's election manifesto, Sajid's social revolution, places prominence to uplift the innovation-driven economy of Sri Lanka, ensuring businesses are more knowledge-intensive and that the service sector expands. Minister Ranavaka brought these further explanations on Sajid Premadasa's manifesto at a media briefing held yesterday. Das Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, Champika Ranavaka, State Minister of Finance, Eran Vikramaratna, Non-Cabinet Ministers, Ajit P. Pereira and Dr. Harsha De Silva attended the media briefing to discuss on Sajid Premadas's election manifesto, Sajid Social Revolution. Addressing at the event, Minister Champika Ranavaka highlighted that it is high time to leapfrog to innovation-driven economy. To meet this end, science, technology, engineering and mathematics-based education will be ensured and business Businesses will be highly encouraged to be more knowledge intensive, Minister Ranavaka added. Also, in the media briefing, it was emphasized that 10 billion rupees will be allocated separately for the Venture Capital Fund and Innovation Fund under Sajid Premadas's tenure. Meanwhile, State Minister of Finance Zeran Vikramaratna noted that certain politicians mock at Sajid Premadas's policies related to center napkins and that such mockery is due to the lack of proper knowledge on the requirements of females. He further added that Premadas's manifesto has recognized that more female representation in the parliament will be helpful to meet the requirements of the females. On the other hand, upon a question by a media personnel on cancelling the wine store licenses, non-cabinet minister of economic reforms and public distribution Dr. Harsha De Silva noted that the further wine store licenses will be cancelled but not the prevalent one. No, there is no cancelling of existing licenses for wine stores. What the presidential candidate has pledged to do is not to issue any more wine store licenses, any further wine store licenses. Furthermore, he noted that the country will closely work with global agencies to stop the flow of drugs to the country. There is going to be better coordination between international agencies who are working on uh, narcotics and the tracking of how narcotics come from various countries to other countries. So I think if there is a better coordination, we would be able to get at the mistakes. <coughs> SLPP presidential candidate Gotabe Rajapaksa states that he won't let any terrorist group to operate in the country if he gets elected as the president in the forthcoming election. He made these remarks addressing a public rally held in Nugavela in Kandy yesterday. Thus, opposition leader and former president Mahindra Rajapaksa and representatives of the party also attended the political campaign held in Nugavela yesterday. Addressing the gathering, SLPP presidential candidate Gotabe Rajapaksa stressed that the current government has neglected the local plant. To export standard goods and crops, the local farmer should be first strengthened. Only then the country's export basket will be commendable, he further added. SAPP presidential candidate also pointed out that Ceylon tea was ranked number one long ago and now its recognition has stooped to the fourth place. Against this backdrop, the SLPP presidential aspirant pledged to fortify the small, medium and large-scale investors and entrepreneurs in the country. Sri Lankan Office of World Health Organization states that youth voice and their feedback are essential in achieving sustainable goals. These claims were mentioned in an event organized by the Asian Universities Alliance at the Colombo University this morning. Youth are vital to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that the WHO works towards. They are a key driver of success as, by definition, Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Therefore, youth voice and input is crucial to achieving the sustainable development goals. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today.
The all share price index dropped 37.14 points to close at 5,956.52, and the SP SL20 dropped 22.87 points to close at 2,958.23. The turnover was 953 million rupees and over 22 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all the news for today. Join us tomorrow at the same time. Until then, take care. Good night.